Introducing Royal Caribbean's newest ship, Icon of the Seas, the ultimate family vacation. The ultimate six slides, eight neighborhoods, zero compromise vacation. The ultimate never done that, can't wait to do it vacation. The ultimate chillin' by a different pool every day of the week vacation. This is the Icon of Vacations. Icon of the Seas, arriving in 2024. Book today. Come seek the Royal Caribbean. Ships Registry, Bahamas. I'm Dana Perino. Join me for my brand new podcast, Perino on Politics. As we analyze the 2024 election cycle, make sure you subscribe to this series on foxnewspodcast.com or wherever you download podcasts and leave me a rating and review. Food Heals Podcast, episode 214. We got to speak truth to power. Where our power comes from is the truth. I mean, the truth can only be suppressed so long. I mean, the reason that McDonald's has to spend a million dollars a day in advertising is because, you know, they're selling people junk. I mean, if they were selling people healthy stuff, they wouldn't have to spend so much money. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Hills Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put in their Lululemons and take a yoga class while drinking a green juice. If you experience any of these symptoms, text your priest immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. No co-host on today's episode. It's just me and Dr. Michael Greger from nutritionfacts.org. I know many of you are already huge fans of his, and he needs no introduction, but just in case you don't know, Dr. Greger is a founding member and fellow of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. He's a physician, a New York Times a best-selling author, and he's an internationally recognized speaker on nutrition, food safety, and public health issues. His site, nutritionfacts.org, is a non-commercial, science-based public service, which gives us free updates on the latest in nutrition research through bite-sized videos. He actually has videos on more than 2,000 health topics. They're all free. He adds new videos and articles every single day. That's a hard worker right there. All his proceeds from his books, DVDs, and speaking engagements are all donated to charity. And Dr. Greger is so busy disseminating all the research for us and educating the public that he was only able to grant us a 30-minute interview. But don't worry, I know you need more content today for that run, for that commute, for cleaning the house. So whatever it is you're doing, I've got an hour's worth for you. As usual, stay tuned because after the interview, I have some special announcements for Food Heals Nation listeners only. I'm going to tell you about my recent experience at Podcast Movement and share some of my my favorite podcast that I'm listening to right now. I'm going to play you one of my favorite health clips, and I'm going to tell you how you can win a Lululemon swag bag full of our favorite organic, vegan health and beauty products, that and more after my interview with Dr. Greger. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. I love the mission of nutritionfacts.org and the incredible public service that you provide. But for anyone listening who may not know, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. My name is Dr. Michael Greger, and I started the website nutritionfacts.org, which is free nonprofit science-based public service providing daily updates on the latest in nutrition research via bite-sized videos. Uh, there are more than a thousand videos in nearly every aspect of healthy eating with new videos and articles uploaded every day on the latest in evidence-based nutrition, what a concept, nutritionfacts.org. And is there anyone out there reading and figuring out what's going on as much as you are? Whose full-time job it is just to comb through the research? Not that I'm, no, but if there is, I would love to hire them because I need <laughs> all the help I can get. I just can't imagine what a busy life you must lead, reading everything and then sharing that with the world, sharing your findings, whether through books, through online content, videos, all that good stuff. It's just incredible. Well, now we have a whole team. I mean, it used to be just be me starting out. Mm -hmm. um, but now we have like a dozen staff. Um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. And so it's just like a 
kind of a Wikipedia model where, you know, everything's free, but, you know, if people are appreciative, they can, you know, kick in a few bucks. And, uh, you know, we reach so many millions of people that if even one in a thousand people, you know, makes a donation, that's more than enough to keep us thriving. And uh, so it's enabled us to, you know, now we have a social media director and now we have volunteer director and, and we're just able to do uh, so much more. And I can be where I thrive best. And that's in the library doing stuff that I'm kind of uniquely suited to do and everything else can be just kind of delegated to uh, everyone else based on their talents. I love that. And I noticed when you were doing your Facebook Live, you were on a treadmill. So are you on a treadmill right now? I'm on a treadmill right now as we speak. (laughs) That is amazing. You're inspiring me. I just had a, I had another guest who was on a treadmill and you guys are just inspiring me that I got to start podcasting. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's so rare. In fact, I was just uh, speaking to someone today and they were on treadmill too. And I was like, it's about time. Hello. It's brilliant. I got to jump on the treadmill and podcasting bandwagon because I do sit here for hours and interview people. So why shouldn't I be walking? That's right. Yeah. Why not at least move around a little bit? Exactly. Yeah. So I've definitely been working on my posture, but the the treadmill is the next step. Do it. (laughs) Become one of us. Yes. Okay. So I want to talk about your book, How Not to Die. Great title, by the way. (laughs) It's actually not my title at all. Um, uh, someone else, actually, the guy who uh, ghost wrote uh, the South Beach Diet came up with that title. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I uh, love it. It's brilliant. It's simple to digest. I know what the book is going to be about. And so How Not to Die examines top 15 causes of premature death in America, like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, so much more. And it, and it really explains how a nutritional and lifestyle interventions can sometimes trump prescription pills, which we are big fans of that concept, and how other pharmaceutical and surgical approaches may not be the answer. And you really teach people how to prevent and reverse these diseases. So I want to know, what's the difference between an acute illness and a chronic disease, and why aren't doctors really equipped to prevent or heal chronic disease? Well, so an acute illness like uh, getting an infection, a bladder infection or something, take an antibiotic, clear it up, break a bone, and put somebody in a cast. And we are awesome at that mm-hmm. in modern medicine. Unfortunately, that's, uh, you know, we're not well equipped to deal with about 80% of what comes uh, into a primary care office's door, and that's chronic disease. So that's diseases that develop over time, like heart disease, high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes. These are our leading killers, leading cause of death and disability. But the good news is that we have tremendous power over our health, destiny, and longevity. The vast majority of premature death and disability is preventable with a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle behaviors. Absolutely. And so what are some of the takeaways from your book that you recommend for everyone? I hear you talking about a plant-based diet, which is the diet that I follow. What are some of the things that you recommend that anyone listening can start today doing to really reclaim their health and start preventing and reversing some of these chronic conditions? So you talked about the first half of the book, which is 15 chapters on each of the 15 leading causes of death. It's talking about the role diet may play in preventing, arresting, or reversing each of our top 15 killers. But then the second half of the book, I, you know, I didn't want it to just be kind of a reference book. I wanted it to be a practical guide yeah. on you know, translating this you know, mountain of data into day-to-day grocery store type decisions. So that's what became the second half of the book, where I center my recommendations around a daily dozen checklist of all the things I try to fit into my daily routine, like berries every day, the healthiest fruits, uh, greens every day, the healthiest vegetables, a tablespoon of ground flax seeds, quarter teaspoon of turmeric, the best beverages, the best sweeteners, what, you know, how much exercise to get every day. You know, basically just kind of trying to inspire people to fit some of the healthiest of healthy options into their daily diet. In fact, there's a free app, Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen, iPhone, Android. You can download it and start uh, checking off the boxes today to uh, chart your progress. I love that. And this is separate from the Dirty Dozen. <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Yes, that, that, that's we. Yes, <laughs> um, uh, that's uh, Environmental Working Group has their list of their most kind of pesticide contamination foods. 
Um, uh, but yes, this is uh, this is the opposite. These are foods we want to include in our diet at all costs. And what really got you inspired and led you into this work? I heard you say that your grandmother was saved by evidence based nutrition, and I'm super passionate. Yes. Yeah, because I lost both of my parents when Western medicine could not help them. And I was 25 years old. My mom had multiple sclerosis, then cancer, and then my father had cancer. And so long story short, I was just left with, wow, Western medicine could not heal them. Nutrition was never talked about or mentioned. Plant-based diet was unheard of. You know, this is years ago in a small town in North Carolina. And now I know so much more and I've gone on this mission and I have a passion, but what inspires you? Yeah, and it's so tragic that there weren't these options available. I mean, the options were available, but just many people didn't know about them. Many people still don't know about exactly. them. Exactly. Um, yeah, for me, I, I was, uh, yeah, it was my grandma. I think the the spark for many kids to want to be a doctor when they grow up is, uh, you know, seeing a grandparent get sick or even die. But for me, it was watching my grandma get better. Um, uh, I was just a kid when the doctor sent my grandma home in a wheelchair to die. She had uh, end-stage heart disease. They, she already had so many bypass operations, she basically run out of plumbing at some point. Confined in a wheelchair, crushing chest pain. There's nothing more they can do. Her life was over at age 65. Uh, but then she heard about this guy, Nathan Pritikin, one of our early lifestyle medicine pioneers. And what happened next is actually detailed in Pritikin's biography. It talks about Francis Greger, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they wheeled her in and she walked out. Within a few weeks, she was walking 10 miles a day. And though she was given her medical death sentence at age 65, thanks to a healthy diet, she went on to live another 31 years until age 96 Wow! to continue to enjoy her six grandkids, including me. And I, so that's why I went to medicine. Uh, that's why I wrote the book, How Not to Die. That's why 100% of the proceeds I get from, you know, all my books are all donated to charity. I just I want to do for everyone's family what Pritikin did for my family. That is so beautiful. I love that. And I love that. I feel like many people's stories, unfortunately, comes from a place of they lost someone or they suffered themselves and healed themselves. And yours comes from a place of, wow, I saw someone get over this. And that is my mission, too, to help as many people get the information, have it at their fingertips so they can make informed decisions about their health. So I just love your mission and what you're doing. Yeah, and it's funny. You Like, as a kid, like, I didn't see it as anything remarkable right. like well yeah <laughs> duh that's i mean that's what you do you go to the doctor you get better right, right? so she went to pretty and got better like i mean it was just like, only later did i realize how revolutionary that was i mean back then we didn't even know heart disease was reversible at all right and so then only later did i say wait a second <laughs> why are hundreds of thousands of people continuing to die from this preventable arrestable reversible disease i mean this is this is outrageous and so i wanted to uh to do all I could to get the word out so other people didn't have to suffer that same fate. And I know that there are so many individualized cases and you can't speak to all of them, but if someone is told like you have six months to live or something like that, is that always true? Can people come back and beat the odds? Oh, well, I know we never, I mean, anytime there's any kind of, you have X time to live, we have, those are really poor predictions. Agreed. We uh, just don't know enough about human biology to make those kind of predictions. Well, I mean, it can be helpful to for families to start, you know, getting uh, getting affairs in order and stuff. But uh, I mean, even in cases of disseminated metastatic cancer, there are cases as rare as they may be of spontaneous regressions, completely you cancer riddled throughout the body, huge visible tumors, and then all of a sudden, poof, they all disappear and they get better and they live long, healthy lives. And so you can never give up hope, mm -hmm. though, of course, you have to be, uh, but, you know, you need to be realistic and understand what the, those chances might be and do everything you can to maximize your uh, your chances. And so it's like putting on a seatbelt. And it's like there's no uh, – putting on a seatbelt doesn't guarantee you're not going to die in a car crash. Right. So why do you put on your seatbelt? Because we have data that suggests that those who wear their seatbelts, you know, have better chances. So, so, you know, and so, uh, you know, it's no guarantee. But, uh, you know, we can still get hit by a bus or something. But we have good data suggests that, you know, smoking isn't good. Eating healthy is good. Wearing our seatbelt is good. Having smoke alarms is good. Like, you know, you just, all you can do is do our best to maximize the health and well-being of our families. 
Yes, agreed. And I've seen people come back from extraordinarily chronic conditions or they've been told they only had months to live. And so I'm glad that um, when I say it, it's not as impactful as when a doctor says it. Like, yes, spontaneous remission is possible. We can heal our bodies if given the tools that the body needs to do so. I mean, it's it's remarkable. And this is for every single type of cancer that's been described. There have been cases, spontaneous remission. So there's, I mean, there's always hope. Look, even if a healthy diet and lifestyle doesn't help for that particular condition, you would still want to eat healthy because it would help your body better withstand treatment. It would help your, you know, improve your quality of life for whatever time you have. I mean, eating healthy is always, I mean, it's always a good idea. Yeah. Um, Regardless of the circumstances, it's unfortunate that... um, that doctors aren't uh, taught this in medical school. Yeah, or nutrition. And, you know, for nutrition, I know that every body is different and we all might have slightly different nutritional needs based on where we are, what vitamins we are lacking based on our diet, all that good stuff. But in general, if someone's just starting out, what is the best, healthiest diet that they should start with right away? What are some foods they can add in? The kind of the end goal is to pack in as many whole healthy plant foods as possible. The best available balance of evidence suggests that the healthiest diet is one that minimizes the intake of meat, eggs, dairy, and processed junk, maximizes the intake of fruits, vegetables, legumes, which are beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils, whole grains, nuts and seeds, mushrooms, herbs, and spices, basically real food that grows out of the ground. These are our healthiest choices, but it's not all or nothing. It's not black or white. Any movement we can make along the spectrum towards eating healthier can accrue significant benefits. You know, and look, it doesn't matter what you eat on your birthday or holiday special occasions. It's the day-to-day stuff that really adds up. And, uh, but on a day-to-day basis, we really should try to eat healthy. And so that can be as simple as, you know, getting rid of some of the worst of the worst foods like soda, processed meat, trans fats, simultaneously going out of our way to get in some of the best foods, you know, um, eating, you know, beans every day, berries, greens, cruciferous vegetables, that kind of thing. Adding those to our diet, even if we don't make any other changes, can certainly, uh, you know, get us on the right path. Yes, absolutely. I agree. This is a fun question we've got to ask. Um, you were invited to be an expert witness in the defense of Oprah in that infamous meat defamation trial. Can you talk about that? Yeah, sure. In <laughs> fact, I was still a medical student. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, well, I just happen to be um, kind of have expertise in uh, bovine spongiform encephalopathy or so called mag cow disease. Um, and so, uh, you know, they had this cattle rancher on her show who just described the way in which we feed livestock, which is that we take thousands of tons of, you know, what's left over at this kind of slaughterhouse waste and then recycle it back into animal feed. So by making not only cows carnivores, but cannibals as well, it happened to spread this horrible disease, um, started in Great Britain. And so this was um, something that uh, we didn't hear about a lot in the States, but uh, Oprah heard that we were feeding cows to cows and she said that stop me cold from eating another burger. And the uh, cattle futures on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange took a plunge, took a dive. Some poor Texas cattle rancher lost a lot of money and so sued Oprah under so-called food disparagement laws. 21 states, or at least at the time, had these laws where um, made it illegal to make unfounded comments against perishable food items. Mm-hmm. I, uh, my role, kind of expert witness, was to argue that, no, these were indeed founded comments. I mean, nothing that was said on the show was, you know, uh, not founded in science. But uh, thankfully, actually, the case was won on First Amendment grounds, which is even better. Mm-hmm. Freedom of speech. I, having said that, I mean, it took eight years trying through the courts, appeal after appeal, um, and was this horrible experience. And so if you can drag a billionaire, one of the most powerful people in the world, through the courts... Um, and uh, all that money, then, I mean, who really won? I mean, one could argue that right. it had a really kind of a silencing, a gagging effect on anyone saying anything about, you know, dairy or meat or Coca-Cola or whatever, because look, you don't want, well, Coca-Cola 
it's not perishable, but uh, you know, uh, the pesticides on apples or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to run a news story because you could get, uh, you know, you get sued. Remember the ABC news got sued over the, um, the pink slime mm-hmm. comments and they actually lost and had to pay a lot of money and fines. I mean, it is scary. The amount of money that is behind these industries, whether it's the cattle ranchers industries, or if it's big pharma. And so what, what can we do as individual citizens who want to fight the plant-based fight? What can we do to further our own missions and speak out without getting sued? You know, you write books. I mean, has anyone ever come after you? Should we be concerned if we're speaking up about this type of thing? Oh, well, I was sued by Atkins. I had, I wrote a book about Atkins. So Atkins sued me for defamation oh. or threatened to sue me for defamation. But then they went bankrupt before they could ever carry out their threat. And didn't he die of a heart attack? Not to be crude. Um, but... he, he did slip. And uh, the medical examiner's report does describe him as obese and have a history of heart disease and high blood pressure and all sorts of horrible things. But then again, maybe he didn't even eat his own diet. So right. never, I mean, <laughs> never you know, that doesn't really tell you anything. But no, well, look, we got to speak truth to power. And uh, and that's, re- I mean, the where our power comes from is the truth. I mean, the truth can only be suppressed so long. I mean, the reason that, you know, McDonald's has to spend a million dollars a day in advertising is because, you know, they're selling people junk. I mean, if they were selling people healthy stuff, they wouldn't have to spend so much money, right? I mean, right. to convince people to eat stuff that isn't good for them. I mean, you know, tobacco industry, I mean, these industries have to spend huge amounts of money because there's this science suggesting their products are hurting people. And so you just have to, you have to pay off the doctors, you have to pay, I mean, it's just, a, the, you know, but so we got truth on our side and truth eventually wins out in the end. The question is how many people have to die beforehand. So for example, it took more than 25 years and 7,000 studies mm-hmm. before the first Surgeon General report against smoking came out in the 60s. Wow. Right. And so, I mean, we already had decades of science linking mm-hmm. smoking with lung cancer, but it was ignored. Why? Because smoking was normal. Most doctors smoked. The average per capita cigarette consumption was 4,000 cigarettes a year, meaning the average person walking around smoked half pack a day on average. Right. The American Medical Association was telling everybody, don't worry, smoking in moderation, totally fine. Right. right. I mean, all the stuff you hear today. Right. I mean, the just the standard American diet, it's normal. Everybody's eating this way. Your doctor's eating this way. You're it's just normal. Yeah, it's also normal to die of lifestyle diseases like heart disease. Right. And it shouldn't be normal. And it is. And that's the tragedy. And so are there any things that people are saying right now that you foresee in the future? Like, oh, this is okay in moderation that you see in the future will be the new smoking. That's like, you know what? It's not like, is it sitting for too long? Is it sugar, alcohol, anything? Oh, well, no. Well, look, we already have. So processed meat, right? Bacon, ham, hot dogs, lunch meat, sausages, that kind of thing has already been classified by the AI. ARC, the official kind of body that determines what is and is not cancer causing in the World Health Organization, they have bumped up uh, processed meat this years ago now to as a to a category one carcinogen. That is the highest ranking. So that essentially means that, that we these are things we know cause cancer in human beings. So other category one carcinogens, tobacco, asbestos, plutonium, right? That's where processed meat is. Whereas something like a burger, unprocessed meat. Um, is a category two carcinogen, meaning a probable human carcinogen. It probably causes cancer, so we probably shouldn't eat it. But we know people send their kids to school, like these little Lunchables and stuff. It's like putting a you know carton of milk and carton of cig- yeah. cigarettes on you know like school trays. Like I mean, it's just it's amazing that this isn't being shouted from the rooftops. Right. And look, it, it's look, it's your body, your choice. You want to smoke cigarettes, you want to go bungee jumping, you want to do whatever you want, but you should know you should be informed. the predictable consequences of your actions. You should be informed so you can make an informed decision. If you still want to do stuff, well, do whatever you want, but you should do it knowing not just the food industry propaganda, but you should know what the actual science says. Exactly. And that is so that you can make an informed choice, be an informed patient about your own health and not outsource your health to doctors once you get sick. So for me, I eat a whole foods plant-based diet. I'm pretty good 90% of the time. And I know that wine is not good for me, but I know that I can drink it and I'm taking the risk because the rest of me is pretty darn healthy. So that's my choice. And that's an informed decision I get to make. Sounds good to me. (laughs) I will. Cheers to that. 
<laughs> Cheers to that. So I know you have a book coming up, not till 2019. So we have to wait. But can you tell us what you're working on now? Oh, yeah. So uh, a, a book on uh, weight control called How Not to Diet. It will, oh, be, out, love it. <laughs> it will be out December uh, 2019. That is, if I can continue to maintain my deadline. Uh, hopefully it won't be bumped back. I only have eight more months to, to write. And uh, that's not a lot of time when there's 80,000, you know, articles on obesity to churn through. Wow. But uh, I'm uh, working my bestest. I love that. And is there anything you can share from the upcoming book that you have discovered about how not to diet and how to, you know, what's what's the deal with fasting? What's the deal with all these new age things that are coming up? Ketogenics. Oh, my God. There's so much crazy cool stuff. <laughs> what I assumed, you know, I assumed I would just be doing kind of, well, you know, like how not to die where I'm just, you know, showcasing the best available balance of evidence, you know, so, you know, people don't know about Ornish's, you know, landmark studies on reversing the progression of cancer and reversing heart disease and um, all the amazing things that we can do and diabetes and our blood pressure, all these things. But, you know, it's not like I'm doing any really original research or doing much synthesis. I'm just kind of putting out there what's out there and just kind of arranging it in a way that's, you know, hopefully palatable for people. And I thought I'd be doing the same thing with, with weight loss. All right, well, here's the studies. This is the best, you know, weight loss has ever been shown. Here's what they did. This works. This doesn't work based on the best available balance of evidence. Should we skip breakfast? Should we not skip breakfast? Like, just what does the science say about everything? But I was tickled to find that, indeed, there's actually – just, I think people are just in academia, they're just so siloed with their own little, you know, they spent 30 years in some basement laboratory tinkering with a single enzyme or something. And they're well read within their tiny little specialty. But um, I have the luxury of being able to kind of have this broad swath and looking at this all at the same time. And I think I've discovered some really kind of unique metabolic uh, quirks that can be taken advantage of to... Um, of accelerate weight loss. My concern, though, is their safety because they no one's ever thought to to do these things, and so we just don't have data as to what we would actually do for people. And so I have to make sure uh, I'm not going to put anyone uh, at risk for releasing it. But uh, there are the spoiler alert is there is actually new stuff that you wouldn't think mm -hmm. after <laughs> so many articles on uh, obesity and weight loss, you wouldn't think there's anything new to be discovered. Um, just lot uh, lots of garbage to wade right. through. But no, I think there it'll actually not just be a good reference book, but actually contribute to the literature with uh, some kind of unique, new, uh, interesting uh, uh, ways to uh, accelerate uh, weight loss. Hopefully in a healthy way, we'll find out. Dr. Greger, I can't wait till 2019. I mean, this is so exciting. Everyone wants to know how to lose weight and often weight loss leads to actually healing chronic disease by default if you do it the healthy way. So this is so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the writing's going well. Um, there's about a hundred sections so far. Let me see. May I'm done with about 23 of them. Things are going well. If I keep up this pace and, uh, it'll be a thing of beauty. All right. I got to ask you one last question of all of the weight loss tactics and tools that you've seen throughout the years, besides diet and exercise. And what I do is personally skip breakfast and I do a short intermittent fast, but is there any supplement or anything like that that you can say definitively does work or is it still, I'll let you know in 2019? <laughs> well, there is some stuff that look promising. I just have to keep digging a little deeper. So yeah, let's wait till the final. I just, uh, you know, and the reason I'm hesitant is only because, you know, sometimes I'll be re researching a topic and I'll be, de and I have my, you know, and I'll be putting all the information together and everything's going and I'm ready to write the script or I'm already writing the script of a you know particular video on topic and I really have a good sense of what's happening and then I'll run across literally a single study and it changes everything. Wow. And all of a sudden it goes from yeah, eat this to don't you dare eat this or <laughs> vice versa. Um and I think to myself, "Oh my god, what if I didn't what if I missed that?" Right, right. You know, I mean I I could have totally missed that and come out with something that actually hurt people or I mean experiences like those that freak me out. Um, and that's why I'm so glad now to have a whole team yeah. um, working on this and to minimize the chances that um, anything important will ever be missed. And so, but that's why I'm just, I'm always hesitant to, um, 
to make any kind of final proclamations on anything before all the science is in. Well, I really appreciate that and respect that. You know, I had to ask for my listeners, but we only have a couple minutes left. So please let everyone know where they can find you online. Watch your 2000, you have more than 2000 videos on nutritionfacts.org. So give us all the goods, social media, where can people watch? I guess so probably the uh, best place um, is just go to nutritionfacts.org. Everything's free. You know, there's no ads, no corporate sponsorship. People welcome to go to their local library and uh, get any and uh, take out any of my books. All the proceeds I see from all the sales of my book, I'll go to charity. And so it's really just a matter of uh, you know, anything I can do to help people to uh, start eating healthier. And you don't know, basically, until you give it a try what effects it'll have. So um, I encourage people to uh, do their best to take care of themselves and their families. Yes, agreed. And if anyone wants to talk to you directly, they can jump on a Facebook Live that you do Q and A. So oh, you can ask yeah. Dr. Greger, right? Yeah, and every every, yeah, every month on I do Facebook Lives and YouTube Lives. Uh, today was the day where I did both. Uh, the next one will be June twenty eighth. June twenty eighth, I'll do Facebook at one p.m. Eastern and YouTube oh one thirty. Right, so it'll be a quick jump over looking very much forward to it. It's lonely be writing books. I mean, normally I'm on the road and meeting people every day. And um, that, I mean, it's so exciting and so invigorating. I hear all these great stories of miraculous health transformations. But, you know, I'm on a three-year cycle where I do a new book every three years. So one book, one year I'm doing the research and then another, you know, I'm out on the road promoting. Then I go back. You know, my book writing years are very, it's just me kind of hunkered over or in some dusty stacks of the, you know, some medical school library basement. Right. Um, and so it's it's just very kind of isolating. So, uh, yeah, the they monthly Q&A is at least I can, uh, you know, stick my head above the water for a few moments at least. Amazing. Well, I know that Facebook appreciates it. I know you got to a lot of questions on the last one that I watch and I can't wait to join you on the next one. Great. Well, keep up the good work. Thanks, you too. Thanks for being here today. Anytime. All right. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Dr. Gregor. Food Heals Nation, I have some special announcements and stories for you. I just got back from Podcast Movement where I had an incredible time catching up with some of my favorite people and learning the latest tips and tricks to becoming a better podcaster and really providing you with the best information that I can. Are any of you out there conference junkies? I go to quite a few in the podcasting world, in the business space, and in the health and wellness world. So I think you could consider me a conference junkie. Maybe you attend them too for work, or maybe you go to ones in the field that you're trying to get into or to learn more about that side hustle. And, you know, conferences can be really intimidating. The first time I ever went to Podcast Movement, which was year one, so two years ago, I've been to three now, so this will be my third year. I only knew a small handful of people and I didn't really know them very well. So asking them to hang out or go to dinner after the conference was super intimidating and walking up to someone at a conference and introducing myself literally gave me heart palpitations because even though a lot of my friends may see me as extroverted, I'm truly an introvert and I am shy before walking up to people I don't know. And so, you know, the conference was so educational and informative. But the whole point of these conferences is to meet new people and people that could become your friends, people that you could do business with just to have great relationships. And I was shy a few years ago and now I'm not. And a lot has changed for me, but it's also because I changed. And so I want to talk about that. You know, the number one lesson that I have learned from conferencing that I can apply this to so many things today, my social life, my personal health, my business the number one lesson is to get out of your comfort zone. And that is when the magic happens. So when we get out of our comfort zones, let's say at a conference, and we walk up to someone and say, hi, my name is Allie. We make friends. When we get out of our comfort zone in the health space, let's say we work harder in that workout, we run that extra mile, we lift that extra weight. When we get out of our comfort zone, that's when our bodies change. Maybe we're starting a new habit, we're cooking healthy food at home, we're starting a smoothie regimen. 
that's when things change again. We get out of our comfort zone. Our body gets healthier. Maybe we're giving up a habit, giving up sugar, or giving up that nightly dessert, or trying to take out gluten or dairy or another allergen from our diets. Our mind might fight us, but our body is thanking us, right? Magic happens when we get out of those comfort zones. So be thinking about what are some ways that you can get out of your comfort zone and what can you change? You know, from year one to year three at Podcast Movement for me, so much has changed. Year one, I was shy and introverted, like I said, with very few friends. But by year three, because I got out of my comfort zone, started meeting new people and just started talking to people, I was surrounded by friends the whole time. People texting me, what are we doing for dinner? What are we doing tonight? What sessions are we going to? What parts of the conference can we not miss? And I even ended up throwing a last minute karaoke party with my friend, Bill Nowicki from the Marietta Stories podcast. Just by telling our friends, we completely packed the bar with podcasters. And I also hosted the women's networking event with Giovanna Rossi from the Well Women Show, Carolyn Cole from Boom Tank, and Doc Cannon from the Over Coffee podcast. And it was a round table. It was kind of like speed dating. You sit down, you say, hi, my name is, you exchange business cards. Each person had 60 seconds to kind of give their elevator pitch, but not so much pitch because I hate that word. It was more like, here is what I do. This is my podcast or this is my podcast idea. This is why I'm here. And it was a great way to network and make friends. This was um, the first day of the conference. It was kind of the pre-day activity. And so I got to run that and help other people meet people and get out of their comfort zones. And now, because I keep going to these conferences, whether it is Podcast Movement, the Podcast Cruise, or many others that I've been to in the business, wellness, and podcasting space, I have made three of my closest friends out of these conferences. And many people think success from conferences is when you land some business deal or you know you get some business partnership. But for me, it's truly been the friendships. And it's because each time I stepped out of my comfort zone, I said, hi, my name is Allie. I didn't say, and I want to be your friend, but pretty much that person was probably feeling the same way that I was too. And we ended up becoming fast friends. And I just want to shout out three of my favorite people who are some of my closest friends and host three of my favorite podcasts, because I want you guys to get to know them too. They've all actually been on the podcast. Some have been actual long form interviews and some have done little short snippets. Um, So you may remember them, but first I want to shout out Erica Mandy and she hosts the Newsworthy podcast. It's all the day's news that you need to know in less than 10 minutes. So it's super short, easy to digest. Um, She's got a great upbeat personality. She sounds like an E host if you guys like E entertainment channel. So the news doesn't feel depressing because you're hearing it from Erica, right? So it sounds like you you don't want to kill yourself when you hear about Trump's latest tweet. Um, She's always unbiased and she shares all perspectives. Unlike me, who wouldn't be able to hold themselves back, um, she does not do that. So, And it doesn't matter what your political party is or what your beliefs are. You're just going to get the news in an easy to digest format and really understand what's going on so that you can have conversations about the news and really be informed. So it's a great show. She talks about politics, business, tech, entertainment. She tries to cover all the topics all in less than 10 minutes. It's available every weekday, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also get episodes straight to your email inbox by signing up at thenewsworthy.com. Huge shout out to Erica. She was on the podcast movement stage twice. I went to both her talks. She was amazing. The second person I really want to shout out is Laura Peterson. We actually met on the podcast cruise, which was also hosted by Jared and Dan from podcast movement. And she's been on a couple of episodes of our podcast, brief conversations. She also came to our vegan Italian getaway. So that's what these friendships can lead to sometimes as you end up. I feel like the only time I hang out with Laura is when we're traveling. So that's really fun. And her website is Copy That Pops, and her podcast is of the same name, and it's writing tips, psychology hacks, and best selling book launch strategies. So her description is basically like, let's nerd out on principles of persuasion and psychology, compelling copy tips, and marketing to make you a number one best selling published author on Amazon faster, easier, and cheaper than you thought possible. So she helps people write copy, whether it's their marketing copy or their book copy, probably both. And then she helps you market it and get it on Amazon and become an Amazon number one best 
bestseller. And she's also a speaker. And I would call her a super connector because she kind of knows everyone. She gets to know people and then she connects them. So she's a great contact to have. And she's taught me a lot about psychology and how to use it in building business relationships and building friendships and in podcasting. So it's a really great resource for anyone in the space of writing. And so I would love for you to check it out, copythatpops.com. And the third friend that I really want to shout out is Katie Kremitzos. You remember her from Food Heals Podcast 180. Um, We talked about how to stop overeating, how she cured her asthma naturally, and how she created a business and a life that she loves. You know her from Biz Women Rock, but I want to shout out her brand new podcast, which I'm literally obsessed with. I listened to it three times while I was in Philly at Podcast Movement. It's called the Meditation for Women podcast. And it's great if you're having some anxiety, if you need some more clarity in your life, if you need calm. I needed calm at the conference because it was go, go, go. So I needed to mentally take a break and check in with myself and go inward and make sure to take that 10, 15, 20 minute break to just reconnect. And her podcast was great. So maybe you're looking to establish a regular meditation practice. So if so, you can tune in for her weekly guided meditations. They were created just for women. They will inspire, calm, and center you. This is your home of guided meditations to use regularly throughout all seasons of your life to gain more awareness, practice mindfulness, and become deeply connected with the special, beautiful women you already are. And she tells women, look, you're extraordinary. Remember that you have gifts to share with the world. And I just get chills thinking about it. Her voice is super calming and soothing and everything she believes, I believe. And, you know, Katie came with us on our vegan Italian getaway with Laura and with a bunch of other amazing wellness peeps. And that's one thing that can happen from conferences. You never know who you're going to be traveling with. Like Laura, I see, I feel like I only see Katie when we're on vacation. Um, I went to her and her husband's conference called Pod Fest, which is another great conference that's held. Um, I think it's in March this year. It was in February last year. That's in Orlando. And I'll be speaking, doing the women in wellness panel. So hope you can join me there. I know I'm sidetracking. But yeah, they both joined us in Italy, and um, I'm going to move to Italy now. I feel like it's a good segue. So you may have heard our episode that both Katie and Laura were on because we went live from Italy, and we are now open for 2019 if you want to join us. It's going to be June 15th to June 22nd. We go to the Amalfi Coast. It is so beautiful and so fabulous. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it, so I will try to keep this brief, but I'm hoping that you're going to join us. You can download the brochure at foodhealsnation.com and click on Italy Retreat. You can see all the photos from the retreat. You can read more about what we do day to day, what the activities are, but we just immerse ourselves in the Italian culture. We're going to be on the storybook Cliffside Towns of Ravello. We're going to learn how to cook delicious vegan Italian food with Chef Leslie Durso. We're going to dine at some of the most extraordinary vegan restaurants on the coast. And they're not all vegan, so they are restaurants where we go and do the vegan tasting menu. And Leslie really teaches us how to bring it back home so you can eat delicious, hearty Italian meals, but they're just going to be a little bit healthier for you because we're not going to include the inflammatory causing foods like dairy. And I know most of us try to stick away from meat or have as little meat as possible. And so on this trip, you're just going to have the most delicious food. If you're gluten-free, it's no problem. We did have uh, another podcaster, Nor from the Food Proof podcast who was gluten-free in the U.S. and was actually able to eat some gluten in Italy because it's just processed differently. The food's just healthier there. Oh, the tomatoes, the olives, all the food is grown in this really healthy soil. And so it just tastes so much better. And so we really go and eat the best food you can eat on the coast. We drink the best wine. We do olive oil tastings. We're going to have great conversations. We're going to have hiking, swimming, boating. I mean, the list goes on and on. Shopping. I got so many dresses. Everything's included. So it's a great deal. You're going to have a roommate. So we have a villa and it's two people per room. So you can bring someone or we can match you up with someone. 
And so you're going to come, you're going to stay with us. You're going to learn about health. We're going to be a vacation. It's truly a vacation. There are no lectures. Um, there are just conversations. You can ask us anything and we can learn together how to eat healthier while being on vacation and, you know, doing a nature walk on the path of the gods um, to P- Positano. We're going to do the steps. We're going to swim. We're going to browse beautiful artwork. There are so many Instagram opportunities to take the most breathtaking pictures you've ever had. We can do hot and cold water treatments in the grotto that's on property. I mean, it's just such a beautiful trip. I plan to do it every year, at least once a year. I wish I could even do more. We shall see. (laughs) So if you want to join us, please get on the waiting list. If you're not ready to commit, that's at foodhealsnation.com slash Italy. And if you are ready to commit, just email me at info at foodhealsnation.com. You just have to put down a deposit to reserve your spot. But if you do it now, you're going to save money before the prices go up. So we'd love to have you in Italy. And the last announcement I'm going to make before I play you a clip to play us out of today's show is it's swag bag time. Do you want to win a Lululemon gift bag full of our favorite organic, non-toxic, healthy vegan products? I think you do. I know I do because the bags are sitting in front of me right now and I'm like, can I have one? Um, No, I get to test all the products. I'm just joking. But we have our swag bag contest. It's back. How to enter. Okay. Step one, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you've already left us a review on Apple Podcasts in the past, just go to Stitcher or leave the review somewhere else. You're going to screenshot that review. You're going to post it to Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. I don't care. Wherever you are, you post it wherever you want to. You're going to tag at Food Heals Nation and use the hashtag Food Heals Swag to make sure we see it. So what I'll do is I'll go to Twitter. I'll search for the hashtag to make sure that I see your review. Same with Instagram or Facebook. The winning 10 reviewers are going to receive a gift bag shipped right to your door with some amazing products. So let me go through some of the products that you are going to get. We've got these beautiful welly water bottles. We've got the B4 vitamin supplement. It's what you drink before you drink. We've got the orange flavored ones, which taste like childhood deliciousness. We've got Banish products. You're either going to get the Banish oil or the pumpkin enzyme mask. Both are fab. You're going to get the WM Nutrition all-natural pre-workout supplement. The natural dentist sent us their peppermint twist anti-plaque rinse with aloe vera. You're going to get some probiotics. They're Thrive probiotics, and they include antioxidants. You're going to get beautiful Erica's Axiology lipstick. So pretty on your lips. We've got four Stigmatics mushroom coffee with lion's mane and chaga, or you're going to get their mushroom hot cocoa mix. We've also got Addictive Wellness Elixir Blends. It comes in caramel, chai, or cacao. Yum. We've got Zatik. You're either going to get their Gratitude Face Serum or their Nutra Face Serum. Both are wonderful. We've got an issue of Veg News. Thank you, Colleen, that we were featured in. And we've got Vermont Soap. You're either going to get their African Shea Butter or their Oatmeal Lavender Bar Soap. So those are some of my favorites. There may be a few more products added in. Um, waiting to hear back on those. But to enter, again, you know what to do. Leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts, screenshot it, send it to us via Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Tag us at Food Heals Nation. Use the hashtag Food Heals Swag. You'll be automatically entered to win. Good luck to you, Food Heals Nation. And finally, let me just tell you again why I love Dr. Gregor's Facebook Lives. First of all, he gives you a ton of great information and answers all of your questions. But the real reason I love them is because dude does them on a treadmill while wearing a suit and tie. I mean, brilliant podcast goals for me. I need to get on that treadmill, start working out podcasting at the same time. I pulled a clip from one of my favorites to play us out and I encourage you to catch up on all his shows and Facebook lives. You can do that at facebook.com slash nutritionfacts.org. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. Dr. Michael Greger coming to you live from my treadmill as I do every month to answer any questions you may have. For those of you unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. And I compile the most interesting, most groundbreaking, most practical findings 
to new videos and articles I upload every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no corporate sponsorships, strictly non-commercial, not selling anything. Just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence-based nutrition. As physicians, all we can do is share with you what the predictable consequences of your actions may be. And then it's totally up to you as to what you want to do with that information. The problem is, uh, is a lack of information. People just don't know about the power they have over their health, destiny, and longevity. The vast majority of premature death and disability is preventable with a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle behaviors. Yet you will not hear that from Pfizer. You will not hear that from the uh, drug industry um, uh, or too often even from the medical industry. Um, and that's unfortunate. So that's why I do what I do. Adrian asks, just being diagnosed oh, with anemia today, how do I improve it quickly? So uh, you need to find out why you're anemic. There's a bunch of different reasons you can be anemic. One is um, uh, is uh, dietary insufficiency, not gaining enough iron, for example. Another is that you're losing too much blood. If you have uh, heavy periods or for whatever reason, uh, your, uh, your spleen may be eating up your blood and killing, uh, killing off your blood cells too early. Um, uh, so there's a bunch of different reasons. You just have to ask your physician, why am I anemic? And then as always, you treat the cause. Um, and if the cause is indeed um, insufficient iron, then uh, I would encourage people to eat vitamin C rich foods with their meals to boost the absorption of the non-heme iron found in whole plant foods like um, whole grains and legumes. Um, and, uh, and so what are vitamin C rich foods? Citrus. Tropical fruits, bell peppers, broccoli, all good choices to boost the iron absorption in meals. Oh, and don't drink tea with your meals, as tea can block the absorption of iron. Um, so uh, I definitely encourage people to drink tea, but just do it separate from meals. Paolo, at pa no, sorry, Paola asks, um, from my video that the number one source of dietary aluminum is processed cheese, does that also hold food for, for, true for processed vegan cheese? Um, you have to look at the ingredient label. So we should actually list whether or not they use aluminum salts in their cheese. And so uh, check out the ingredient list on your favorite vegan cheese. Diane asks, advice for those of us with rheumatoid arthritis. Fantastic question. I've got a bunch of videos. Just type in rheumatoid into nutritionfacts.org and all sorts of videos will come up. You are lucky to have a disease for which um, one can uh, treat the cause with the diet and lifestyle interventions and there's really, uh, really extraordinary um, benefits to eating a whole food plant-based diet um, for rheumatoid arthritis. Um, also, other autoimmune diseases such as Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, we have a great evidence for some of the others like ankylosing, uh, spondylitis and stuff. It's just never been put to the test, but uh, since these are kind of the same family of diseases, I would encourage people to give it a try. It's always a good idea to eat healthy, period, just because all oh, these other wonderful benefits whether or not it works for the actual condition. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.